Hello everyone. Welcome to the session, second session of the day. And we have Ms. Dyuti Mittal uh, for her lecture. And before we invite her, may I introduce the speaker. Dyuti Mittal is a Delhi-based graphic novelist, illustrator, and artist. She is a graduate in visual communication design from the Shishti School of Art in Bangalore. She wrote and self-published her own experimental graphic novel in 2009 her, and had her work exhibited at prominent galleries of the country, such as the Gallery Mirchandani Strainbrook in Bombay, and has worked as the illustrator and graphic designer for Down to Earth magazine, and has conducted fellowships with Sarai CSDS in Delhi, has been published as an illustrator in over 20 books with publication houses such as the Aleph Book Company and HarperCollins, and has recently completed a summer residency in illustration at the School of Visual Arts in New York. Her work mainly explores gender dynamics through the lens of her own experiences, social constructs such as normalcy, beauty, madness, modern day relationships, the politics of touch and identity. She is also pursuing an MA in design from the University for the Creative Arts in London. May I now invite Ms. Tuti Mittal for her lecture. All right, thank you. Um, just the mic a bit. Uh, thank you for having me here. It's it's a complete pleasure. I am very humbled, and um, I'm a little ill at ease being here because uh, you know it's my um, because I'm still learning as a graphic novelist. I'm not there yet, and uh, so it's it's uh, it's very. Um, it, it's very humbling to be invited to share my journey and about my work. Um, you know, I'm um, uh, very excited to see this crowd here because it reminds me of my times as 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 somebody who was studying um, uh, not too long back as as an ed uh, while educating. Uh, and I think truly that knowledge is power. So um, you know, it helps you understand yourself. It bridges the gap between the world and its parts, and it, it gives you the power to change, uh, which is very, very valuable. So uh, I think that it's uh, extremely um, important to be here as much as it is to be here. And um, and yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 I wish I could go back to those days and go back to uh, studying again. Uh, coming back to my presentation, uh, I'm talking today about how to, uh, you know, I've already been introduced. I'm a graphic novelist and uh, an illustrator, an artist. I tend to break out of terms. Um, I, I don't really define myself uh, because I, uh, I do multiple things. But uh, uh, if I have to call myself something, then yes, it, it is a graphic novelist. And uh, um, I, um, you know, I, I've been, in the practice now for the last 10 years or so. And uh, you know, uh, today I'll be talking about how you can strengthen your roots and foundation as an artist, things you don't, uh, you don't, you taught a lot about, uh, you've analyzed books a lot, you've seen, um, you've read books a lot, but not many people will tell you how to actually strengthen your foundation as a graphic novelist slash artist. Um, and how to break the rules once you know the rules. So, so, so how to break conventions as a graphic novelist. Um, and where, I'd also be analyzing and studying where Indian graphic novels are doing that. And, um, and um, yeah, I mean, where Indian graphic novels have done that or are doing that. 
so that's what I'd be talking about during this presentation. Uh, Indian graphics, when we're talking about Indian graphics here, I, I believe we're referring to uh, any kind of interaction between text and image. Uh, so it could be um, not just graphic novels, but comic books, picture books, um, all other kinds of image and text uh, based nar visual narratives. Um, I'm going to move to the next slide. Uh, I'm going to read out two or three quotes here, uh, which I find very powerful, uh, which I feel uh, students can really benefit from. So the first is, the greatest hazard of all, losing oneself, can occur very quietly in the world, as if it were nothing at all. No other loss can occur so quietly. Any other loss, an arm, a leg, a daughter, a wife, is sure to be noticed. Uh, this is a quote about how it's very easy, uh, how in, in a world full of information forms, um, illusions, it's very easy to lose who you really are. And, and that is where my presentation is focused. It's about being in touch with yourself. Uh, it's about finding your own voice, your own individuality, your own self. So this quote is something that I really resonate with. Another quote I really resonate with is uh, the third one, which is uh, something my school teacher wrote to me very personally once, which says, be yourself. That is the, the best way to be for you, not what skeletons lie in the closet of that ever elusive role model. Uh, so yes, I really resonate with the fact that we have to come to a point where uh, life is a constant journey of finding yourself, but, but uh, uh, the, the deeper you go into uh, finding who you are and not relying on other, other inspirations and other, um, other percep our perceptions of what we should be according to what others are, uh, the, the more we'll be able to find our own voice and our own strength and our own work. So I think that quote is really important um, and um, I mean it's a beautiful quote. And uh, the third is the creature gazes into openness with all its eyes, but our eyes are only as if reversed and surrounded everywhere like barriers against its free passage. Um, again, you know, the difference, this is about the difference between animal and man, which is uh, how an animal can feel freely. He can feel without seeing, which is an act of uh, using the mind, mind's filters to perceive things. Uh, so that feeling is uh, being able to, you know, we live in a world of, uh, of dystopia, of, of a gray space between feeling and seeing, where we can't really entirely feel or entirely see. Uh, you know, entire, in, if you were to entirely feel, you would be an animal. And if you were to entirely see, you would be God. But entirely, by seeing, I mean perceive from the mind's eye. And by feeling, I mean doing everything but perceiving from the mind's eye, which is perceiving from uh, your being. And, um, you know, um, we lie somewhere in between, doing neither. We neither feeling nor seeing. But at the same time, the, closest we, the closer we can come to feeling or, see, feeling or seeing, the closer we can come to achieving, um, being, uh, the closer we can come to our work and associating ourselves with our work and finding ourselves in our work. Uh, so these were three quotes I wanted to start with. Um, uh, this was my concept. I'm just, I'm just going to start with a bit of my journey as a graphic novelist and how, um, you know, my first graphic novel panned out. Um, so this was my, this was the concept for my first graphic novel. I used numbers to. I was just talking about the concept of feeling and seeing, and how we neither feel nor see, and we lie in a space between feeling and seeing. Uh, that is a space of dystopia where we are never doing anything to its completeness. Uh, there's never everything, there's never nothing. There's always something in between. So I use numbers in that graphic novel, 0, 1, 2, to depict 0 for nothing, 1 for everything, and proved through the graphic novel that 2 lies between 0 and 1, and that we represent that space of incompleteness between 0 and 1, uh, which, which is represented visually by numbers by the number two. So that was the graphic novel. That was what it was about. And uh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I'll show a couple of pages from the book. So yeah, this 
this is my uh, you know this is I started with a lot of reflective work on the graphic novel so there was a lot of writing there was a lot of understanding what I wanted to say because I came from a place I started out at a place where I was very influenced in college I was I was uh, I was somebody who didn't really understand uh, who didn't really understand uh, who I was and I was I was very caught up in what I wanted what I saw and thought I wanted to be. Uh, so, you know, when I was uh, when I was asked to do this project, I dived deep inside myself and I asked myself, what is it that it, what is it that matters to me? And what is it that I have something to say about? What is the most important thing to me? Uh, and that's when I started discovering these thoughts about uh, how we create and how we live in a space of incompleteness between everything and nothing and um, and that was where my work starts you know my work wants to start at not adding more layers to the world of creation but actually studying what is already there and uh, studying uh, what's uh, studying the world and the nature of, of life itself uh, so that's where it starts and that's where my you know reflection is really really important you have to de dive deep if if nothing comes to mind then you have to persist you have to keep writing if if not consciously write unconsciously but write and and draw and uh, persist so that uh, you find your answer. You, you find your questions, not answers. You find your questions, and you're able to um, you're able to inquire, uh, and you're able to um, you're able to understand what it is that you want to uh, talk about. That is yours. That you feel strongly about. That you um, that you know you. Uh, mm, that you have something to say about yeah because i didn't have anything to say about anything at all uh, for the longest time in my life uh, until i started reflecting uh, again like coming back to what i was saying i think i've covered this entire slide right now but uh, uh, like, I, like i said uh, it's uh, discovering yourself is the first step to creating any piece of artwork uh, any piece of any any graphic novel so uh, the first step is to um, is to be able to find uh, one second yeah look within to find the essence of who you are and um, yes uh, exactly what I said, which is that, uh, you know, uh, the first step is to be able to peel the layers of who you are and go deeper into the essence of, uh, of the person that you are and find, uh, find, find, find what, what it is that touches you, what it is that is your own, what it is that you want to say, what do you truly feel, what do you truly, um, you know so so yeah who who are you in that sense uh, i know it's 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 not possible to answer who you really are but uh, if you ask yourself that you will come closer to finding answers you will come closer to finding answers to uh, what makes you unique what what the essence of something is so um, i i strongly recommend um, diving into the essence of things and reflecting to discover yourself before you start on any any creative journey uh, i would say writing is a very powerful tool to do that uh, yes uh, so writing is a very very powerful tool in my case uh, even though i'm an artist writing has been a huge um, has been one of the reasons why I've been uh, has been the reason why I've been able to 
uh, get in touch with myself. It's not the art, it's the writing. So it varies with everyone, it varies for everyone, it depends uh, what works for you. But writing really works for me and I think writing is one of the best ways to... Uh, just one second. Yeah, some of the ways you can you know, get in touch with yourself is uh, like I've written here, you can uh, you can uh, questioning. So first is start questioning. Yes. The second is start writing. The third is uh, you know enjoy being lost and confused because that's something that is supposed to be that's something that's supposed to be negative, but it's actually a huge. Uh, it's actually a huge. Uh, it can really work in your favor. I was lost and confused all my life. I just had questions. I had no answers to anything in my life. So, uh, but but the fact that I asked questions made me come closer to uh, finding answers. Made me seek and delve deeper. So, uh, be lost. Be lost as long as you need to be lost, and be confused because that is the only path to seeking. And. Uh, uh, other things like observing yourself through the means of uh, meditation, any other self-discipline like uh, dancing, music, um, even say something as something like praying or any of any anything of that nature can be a, a discipline to look within. And each and all of these things work towards. Um, bringing you closer to yourself as a creator. So yes, like I said, writing was a really important part of my journey. Uh, apart from that, I feel uh, looking at the macro picture, uh, which is uh, that, uh, you know, starting with the macro, the larger questions comes naturally to me. Uh, I don't know about others, but uh, for me, I can't really just focus on smaller, smaller, uh, stories around me. I need to ask the bigger questions about life, about who I am, about my existence, about uh, about how we create, why we create, who we are. And I feel, um, so that's my journey. I like to ask the macro questions and then once I'm satisfied enough that I have an umbrella of um, answers to, I have, you know, it strengthens my foundation at least. I am um, able to um, Yes, I'm able to uh, see things in a in a larger perspective, and um, that's why I would suggest students to ask the larger questions first, and then be able to see the smaller uh, quest uh, questions in perspective of the larger questions. Um, that's my strategy, at least, and uh, I'd recommend that to all creative and uh, to all creative people. as far as the uh, you know the the content aspect the mental aspect of uh, creating goes as far as uh, the form goes uh, i think there's nothing absolutely nothing like uh, like writing constantly so sorry like um, uh, like drawing constantly so you have to start drawing you have to i don't know how many of you how, how many of you are uh, artists and not just writers is anyone here an artist as well oh there are a few oh lovely lovely so this talk isn't completely irrelevant to the writers here um right so you know like uh, just drawing and drawing mindlessly drawing continuously drawing incessantly uh, helps with um, helps with finding your own style that's the only way you can discover uh, you can discover come closer to discovering your own voice i feel My, pers my voice personally developed a lot through drawing. So in my initial years was, if you can see, um, you know, I used to draw in a very, in, in a much simpler way initially, and then it progressed to color, it progressed to uh, uh, more involved lines. Uh, all of that came from practice. Uh, 
all of that came from practice. So that's where I feel drawing and, and just continuously drawing anything and everything uh, really helps because a lot of people ask me how I found a style which is so distinct uh, in my work and uh, uh, the only answer is that one is you have to be you have to be in touch with yourself you have to find you have to seek and look within and the other is you have to explore you have to draw you have to write you keep drawing until you're lost and confused and able to uh, find um, and able to find some uh, some uh, something that's yours and you will see magic appear in the sense that uh, you will see things falling into place as you keep exploring wherein the answers keep start emerging and um, and your own philosophies start integrating with your art and your lines and everything that you're drawing starts integrate starts getting integrated with who you are at that point in your life and your philosophies and um, you'll see a magical uh, you'll see something magical emerge so um, I'm uh, all for just drawing and seeing how, how that emerges uh, this is me displaying how you can draw the same thing at different levels of abstraction you know so uh, this was me having drawn the same person the same face uh, sorry actually this is the one uh, this is me having drawn the same face, it's my maid, and it's her face in different levels of abstraction. So explore, this is also part of exploring form and content and, and the interplay between form and content. Uh, these are pages from my first graphic novel, Flaw. It's hand inked and uh, I've already described what the uh, book is about. So yeah, these are again some sketches, old sketches. This is again pages from Flaw, my graphic novel. Um, you know, we already, coming to graphic novels, we already know what, uh, just one second. Right, we already know what the graphic novel is uh, and how it's different from other um, other forms of visual narration. Um, can any of you define what the graphic novel is for me? Uh, does anyone want to define what the graphic novel is? All right, so <laughs> nobody wants to. Uh, yeah, go, please. Uh, yes, you're right. But you know, some of the characteristics of a graphic novel are like juxtaposed panels, um, speech bubbles. Um, then you have, uh, sorry? Time and space and um, <coughs> There's movement through time and space, and uh, it's a moving narrative, yes. And uh, right, so that's that's what we've got. Uh, a graphic novel is a book-length work of sequential art, narrating a story or communicating an idea of science fiction and fantasy to history, memoir, biography, any other kind of non-fiction. The art often interacts with text and other visual imagery in a juxtaposed panel depicting uh, scenes according to the movement of the narrative. Uh, there's panels, there's, uh, there's a frame, there's bleed, there's mid-ground, there's background, there's text caption, there's speech bubble, and uh, yeah, these are the parts of a graphic novel. Uh, 
now my second uh, uh, one of my graphic novels uh, was uh, the taboo for um, this side that side which uh, uh, she mentioned so uh, you know for that um, i started with very initial drawings like these which were paper cuts that i was trying to explore with and moved on to pencil drawings of this nature and these were my final drawings for the book uh, these are my final pictures for the book rather with text and which all hand drawn and um, as you can see i'm breaking the conventional form and format of the graphic novel i am uh, not using any uh, panels any juxtaposed panels uh, speech bubbles or um, and break and connecting pages by uh, connect making a flow between different pages so you know how i i try to make every page an artwork in itself rather than every panel an artwork in itself and i like that the eye is guided from from every part of the page to every part of the page you know uh, and you have to find your way the, you make the viewer find their way through the page rather than guide them through panels so that's personally how uh, i i i do graphic novels and uh, this is an example of how you can break conventions of form and format in graphic novels this is another experimental graphic novel that i created called jackals and arabs um, as you can see uh, the page the narrative moves from the from left to right and every image is connected to every other image um so i show you the entire sequence the entire sequence is somewhat actually have an added that here but uh, if you connect all of this from left to right that that would make one panel um and um, i just decided to think that way you know i wanted to think in a way where i am uh, thinking connected rather than letting the viewer switch pages um and uh, the text is also very organic Sorry. the text is very organic and i've uh, i've laid it out very differently and creatively uh, rather than having speech bubbles in special in specific boxes alone uh this is another short comic i did for an anth anthology on space this is how it looks with text uh Yes. Now coming to how we can break the form and format of a graphic novel. Uh, the first, the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to think deeply and differently. So we have to start with reflection, and we have to be able to think, um, think, uh, think differently. So there are many, there are many ideas in the world. Everything's been talked about. Everything's been written about. you have to find something that resonates with you that you have something to say about and if you will find something that you genuinely have something to say about you will be able to think uh, you will be able to think deeply on it and um, so a certain level of depth is very important when you choose a topic for a graphic novel and uh, the other is uh, you know think differently uh, think out of the box think outside of what's been done and what's already there how you can disrupt the form uh, of a graphic novel uh, you know you can find your own flow visually like in my work uh, so you have to you know have to constrict yourself to the rules of uh, pages and turning pages and uh, page breaks so you know you can find ways to get rid of page breaks and find creative ways to connect visuals without breaking the flow uh if if you think that way in in my case i do and um, and for that there are other formats of books like accordion books 
that you can go with. Uh, you don't have to go with uh, a regular book that turns pages. Uh, and um, in terms of the form, uh, you know, you can uh, guide the viewer's eye through the page in a way where uh, it's not very obvious. Uh, you have to find a way to, uh, you have to put yourself into that page. Uh, how would you want to read that page? How would, how, how much of, is there a part of you which reflects in it? In my case, that sense of, uh, um, that sense of mystery with which I want to guide the viewer's eyes in, into the page is where I reflect myself into that page. Uh, also, like, uh, uh, of course, we spoke about that, but breaking uh, in terms of form, you can always uh, uh, break uh, away from panels. And, uh, uh, and these are just some ways. I'm not saying these are the only ways of doing it, but uh, if, you can, if you can break away from certain rules after knowing them, then you can construct and do things which haven't been done so far at all, uh, do it your way, just break boundaries and uh, that is where I think uh, uh, that is where like great art comes out I think. I'm not saying I'm a great artist, I'm just saying great art. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, Also, like how you place image and text can be very, uh, can be very uh, unique. There are many, many ways of doing that. You can take boundaries of how you place image and text. Yeah. There are million mediums out there. Uh, you know, you can uh, you can try mixed media. You don't have to stick to conventional mediums of pen and ink. Uh, you can try collages. You can try different uh, different different media. So that's also where you can make Um uh, How you draw now? Uh, people yes, how you draw is also. Uh, something you can add your individuality to. So, uh, you know, like in my case, for example, I, uh, people draw in different ways. A lot of people I know draw on A4 size sheets and they're able to draw very minute details in very little space. Um, and they, they work from outside towards the inside. But I, on the contrary, work from inside towards the outside. So I keep expanding. And I keep expanding, since my work is based on flow and connection, um, it's very visceral and it keeps growing outwards uh, intuitively. So I need to, uh, I need to, what I do is uh, I found, I figured that something special about me and I found a way to work around it, which is that I keep, I start with a point on a paper, I keep moving outwards and joining pieces of paper until a huge piece of, uh, a huge piece of flex paper has been covered with, for one visual. So, uh, I, uh, this is how I work. I, you know, you can keep joining papers like I do. You can do whatever it takes, but follow your style of drawing. Whatever resonates with uh, your philosophy of uh, drawing and whatever, um, right, whatever uh, comes naturally to you, right. And, and try to work around those strengths, play around, around your strengths. Um, in terms of abstraction and stylization, uh, do not be afraid of being able to draw things exactly as they are or visualize them perfectly, uh, though it's a choice to do so. So, you know, I would, I would always say not being able to draw is also a style. Uh, and, you know, like I'm not a very good, uh, I'm not a very good artist uh, I, in, in, in a very conventional sense. I can't draw things exactly as they are. 
maybe if i tried i can uh, i haven't even worked on that because i didn't do a fine arts course but uh, uh, i you know you don't need to be able to draw pers- perfectly and have perspectives in place to be able to draw you all you need is so stylization itself as long as it is consistent and it comes naturally to you is a way of uh, drawing which um, which can work wonders so if you can't draw if you can't imagine human forms for example or animals for example draw them as warped as they come out from your pen at that moment of imagining them and uh, see how it will become a style on its own so you know these are these are small ways of uh, finding uh, of playing around with abstraction and stylization also like in terms of narratives uh, uh, shalini also mentioned mentioned this for one of the books but uh, you can look at multi um, multiple narr- narratives within a story so that's also somewhere you can break rules so uh, you know uh, multiple narratives uh, would be uh, multiple narratives and uh, open open endedness in the narrative so you can play around with the way the narrative flows itself uh, as well um you know in in art a lot of uh, a lot of rules have been broken uh, a lot of artists are what they are because they broke the rules and created something that uh, only they could so picasso was one of those artists so i've i've put a couple of his works here hmm. now coming to indian graphic novels uh, we are looking at where conventions have been broken in indian graphic novels so uh, here uh, actually munnu is here <laughs> yeah uh, i haven't read it but yeah it's here uh, so um these are some of the graphic novels that i feel have broken conventions in small ways uh, i'm going to go i'm going to go into the history of uh, indian graphic novels a little very quickly um so you know uh, pre uh, 1950 era we had uh, uh, the balak graphic novels chanda mama uh, again they broke conventions in that um, pivotal uh, magazine because uh, you know it kicked off its own trend and um, and yes uh, it uh, narrated stories uh, through a typically indian third person narrative form of the uh, uh, you know known as our grandparents style of storytelling so that was interesting and that's where the convention was broken in that sense then in the late 1940s to 1950s you had phantom uh, 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 mandrake flash orden pulp pulp something um and um, began to be translated for indian audiences uh, in the 1950s uh, you had indrajal comics then uh, in 1967 amar chitra katha entered the picture uh, again uh, you know ground breaking for how it uh, used uh, mythology and folk tales uh, to and popularize them um, then in 1969 chacha choudhary came into the picture by pran then there was uh, uh, you know competition within the craft there's um, in 1980 there was tinkle magazine was founded um, then there's um, diamond comics has come in raj comics comes in then there's uh, you know uh, unfolding uh, right in 1994 there's origit sains river of stories which again broke conventions in that it um, uh, you know it was the first thinking graphic novel so there were there were all these graphic novels which were talking about uh, with thinking graphic novel as in it was the first graphic novel with a conscience um, yeah 
Yeah, what is it? No worries. I can continue. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Aurajit Sen's River of Stories broke conventions in that. Um, right. Aurajit Sen's uh, River of Stories broke conventions in that it was the first uh, graphic novel with a conscience. You know, it was talking about a, a topic which was close to our life, which was something uh, which was uh, consensual and, um, and not just about mythology and history. So that's where it broke conventions. Uh, even in terms of the narratives, there were multiple narratives like she mentioned in the book. So uh, multiple perspectives and narratives, so that made it very interesting. And it was the first Indian graphic novel. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that term was used first by Aurajit Sen uh, after Sarnath used it uh, next. Yeah. Uh, then we have, uh, you know, uh, then we have uh, uh, Sarnath Banerjee enters the picture in 2006 with, uh, with The Corridor and then Amrita Patil, the first woman graphic novelist, the first commercial woman graphic novelist to enter the scene comes in and uh, she talks about, uh, you know, breaking gender stereotypes by introducing a lesbian character. So that's again where conventions were broken. Corridor, I feel, uh, broke conventions in that it used stylization for the first time in graphic novels, in Indian graphic novels. Uh, just the fact that the drawings weren't realistic, hyper real, they weren't perfect. Uh, there was a stylization to the way the figures were and uh, I personally really love that. So uh, even the subject uh, matter was very kitsch and very uh, fun. Uh, so that's something that broke conventions. Uh, yeah. We have in 2008, we had campfire graphic novels, which again, uh, you know, which was again, uh, which became very big because it associated with uh, giants outside the country. Um, right. Another comic book that I personally uh, really, uh, that I personally really, uh, another comic that I personally really uh, think broke boundaries is Bhimayana, which uh, is, uh, which uses folk art by the Bjorns. And um, now, how Bhimayana broke boundaries is, So, Himayana uh, was um, the illustrations, you know, are uh, very open ended. Uh, they, are, they are leaving things open ended. The narratives are multiple in the book. Um, there's a personal touch to the narration. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of symbolism, uh, which is like hands and motifs that, that are depicted in the book. Uh, fluidity of interpretation is there. Uh, there's, uh, you know, it's breaking away from bubbles and uh, panels again. So the, the visuals are flowing outside, outwards. So again, Mayana, I feel, really broke boundaries, and uh, these are some examples of uh, uh, examples of work from. The mural by Aurajit Sen and the River of Story. This is Chanda Mama. Then, 
you know in terms of uh, in terms of where uh, women in indian graphic novels have uh, women and feminism so i uh, am not just a feminist but i'm also my work hugely um uh, my my work is all about gender dynamics and uh, uh about touch and consent so uh, you know i i was very interested in where indian graphic novels are um where where women stand in indian graphic novels and how women are being depicted in indian graphic novels and where uh, feminism and gender uh, conventions are being broken in indian graphic novels so that's where you had a couple of graphic novels which are doing that there's drawing the line uh, which is um, uh, an anthology about uh, about gender um, about um, harassment and where you draw the line between harassment and uh appreciation uh and and consent and non consent so that's what uh, that that is about party again group boundary because it was uh, about uh, introducing um lesbian characters uh then there's uh tina's mouth there's kimaina which was talking about caste issues and uh, there's sara uh, another graphic novel which uh, talks of uh, uh, yes it talks about the dilemmas women all over the world have faced uh, so there's that and uh, uh women in indian graphic novels uh, you know have also come a long way from being uh, being uh, just mythological characters and overtly sexualized to being women uh, who have you know everyday women with their own struggles uh, and uh, how the change has occurred in the portrayal of women in the indian graphic novels and how the gaze has also undergone an evolution uh, the the gaze the way we look at women characters has also undergone gone an evolution uh, so Yes, uh, that's all. Can you show the uh, P PDFs? I'll be uh, showing you, taking you through some of my newer newer works in graphic novels and short comics, and how again I'm breaking conventions of. form and content in in these novels and creating imagery without panels without um uh, without page breaks speech bubbles etc
problem here. There is okay, okay. Otherwise, we can skip it. Yeah, it's fine. Can you go full screen or not possible? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so uh, these are some of my short comics and uh, you know, they're on subjects of equality and um, equality and touch and dignity. So, uh, you know, even going as symbolic as this is an option. You can you can think uh, so. My work moves in two directions. One is as symbolic as it gets, and the other is as expressive as it gets. So, which is why I'm going to be displaying both to you. Uh, so this is a short comic. Uh, can you show some other work. No, not this. Something else in color. Not this. Not this. Um, yeah, so this is again an accordion book that I have created on uh, called Innocence and Abuse, which is about um, uh, about sexual and physical abuse and how it impacts impacts a woman. And um, as you can see, again, it's an accordion book. Each visual is connected to the other, uh, but you can see how uh, again I have broken conventions of form and content. And, uh, the forms in a very uh, unconventional manner. Yeah. Show another one, another graphic novel. This. Not this. Not this. Not this. There's the first one. Yeah. So can you zoom out? Zoom in. Zoom out. Novel about my experiences with different experiences with touch and sexual harassment, and uh, this is a story that I have uh, penned about an experience I had on a bus where a man touched me without my permission, and um, I've analyzed the experience and written about where there was consent and where there wasn't. So uh, even a form format like this uh, can be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just displaying. How, we, how differently we can do things. Yeah, that's all. I'm going to open the floor for questions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being a wonderful audience. Just uh, please go ahead with questions. So thank you for the wonderful presentation. So I have just two clarification, maybe not a question. So you were uh, talking about how the sense of spilling over the frames to the next page. Yes. So how do you uh, treat the notion of border and margins in the comic or the graphic novels and the sense of time because that's a conventional idea that when we go from panel to panel the time shifts. Mm -hmm. So if you are breaking away from that idea of margin and borders, how the sense of time changes. Right. And second is the, there is what I found is the notion of violence in your work, especially in the notion of violence in the, in your work. Violence. Violence. Okay. So, especially in the use of color and some in some panels with the numbers, the figures are strangled and hanging. So, so do you want to elaborate on that? Uh, 
I'll start with the second point. I do think there's a notion of violence in my work, to be really honest. Uh, I talk about, yes, the th themes of my work have a lot to do with, um, uh, with sexual and physical abuse um, because I empathize with it a lot. And uh, I, uh, and, and touch and, and consent. But violence particularly, I'm not sure. Maybe it's un, uh, unintended. Uh, and as far as the first question goes, uh, which is uh, about um, about the sense of time and space and how do you depict that without page breaks and panels, uh, there are many ways in which you can do that. One is symbolism. So using symbols like the sun, the moon, uh, using colors is another one. Using colors like from, from the panels going from yellow to black can depict time changing. Uh, another way of using, uh, showing time changing is distance. So just showing distance between the panels and, and between, not the panels, but between uh, the objects that you're talking about, the scenes, uh, distancing them a little bit as opposed to keeping them very close together can show how time is changing. Just the sense of flow from one page to the other can itself show that time is moving. Just flow itself is a sense of movement of time. So yes, there are ways in which you can, and of course, there are many other ways in which you can creatively break, show the sense of time. Like uh, you can actually even uh, do things like, um, even with panels, you can play with panels in ways where you can break panels, have them on half the page, show, increase the cutter, show that something uh, something, for example, if you want to show trauma, you can show a huge blank space between two panels and then move to the next panel. Uh, you can have a long gutter in which you can show somebody sitting lonely uh, in the middle of the gutter to show loneliness. So there are many ways you can play visually with space, not just without panels, but even with panels. Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I had, I really love that particular illustration from uh, Jackals and Arabs. Oh, uh, okay. The one which is continuing sure. from the left, right? But my question was, when it, they have been rendered into print, for example, right. uh, is, are there ways in which, say, the printer's requirements? Because in conventional printing, there is always this question of a page flip happening yes, and yes. a page flip necessarily means that there is a rupture created where you didn't want it to happen. So under the circumstances, how do you negotiate with printers practicalities yeah. about? So firstly, you know, I haven't ever printed my books in bulk yet. I've only printed self-published and I've printed select copies as of now. I haven't gone out there and printed in bulk. So it may pose an issue. Uh, when you're printing in bulk, printing of this nature may pose an issue. But as of now, what I do is I construct every book on my own uh, by with, in the accordion format. So uh, that is an option. You can construct books by hand. Uh, I do that. I've, I've sold about 60 copies of Jackals and Arabs yet and I've constructed each one by hand. And um, so I get them. I, there are print instructions to be given. Yes. And uh, the printer needs to be told that each page is separately I sit the printer, I give him the file, I prepare the file, uh, I get it, uh, I get everything done including the borders on the pages which are the bleeds on the pages and then I manually cut and fold the pages to create an accordion book which you can also get done I guess if you train somebody in, in these printing shops to do it, they will do it for you. Yeah, but it's an interesting question because uh, printing techniques do vary massively for unconventional work. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yes, for the hi. Lecture. Um, I was thinking since we are talking about breaking conventions and how you individually uh, make your comics in distinct forms, right? Yes. Like, for example, she took the example of the con 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 panel. continuous panel. So, I was thinking ki, in terms of present uh, state of comic writing in this country, how, how do you see the future of comics going to be like? like 
I was thinking if uh, if we can bypass the uh, you know the idea of of, of the co comic being negotiated because of printing and and and, and if the idea of individually hand printed co comics can come, mm. do you think it's it's a way to go forward? And since you talked about break, breaking uh, mm. conventions and, and forms, uh, so there aren't many uh, there are many many graphic novelists in the market today, but um, not many are breaking boundaries in that sense. But I do see a market. Uh, the, the books I mentioned later, um, you know, whether that was uh, Sarna Banerjee's Corridor or Dhimayana, they all broke boundaries, you know. And, um, and yeah, I think there's a growing market for lateral thinking as well in India, which was lacking in the past. Like, uh, uh, there's, uh, you know, people wanted to read what they read wanted very direct interpretation and now there's room and space for, uh, there's more room for indirect interpretations, uh, for uh, open-endedness, for even metaphysical themes, uh, lateral thinking. So I think that, that market is growing. I think there will be a future for it and uh, I'm encouraging more, more creative people to go in that direction. Yeah. Because that's the only way we will be able to create something new and uh, uh, and keep, uh, you know, keep setting new standards. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Minakshi. Hi. Uh, so, question is, since you're both a student of design and you're discovering your voice as a graphic novelist, do you use any of that theory that you actually learn, you know, uh, from the institution? in the work that you do. Like what is the research that goes behind your work? Is it very different from the theory and the technique that you're, you know, learning as part of the course or is it something that you discover by yourself? So, uh, Minakshi, very, very interesting question. Uh, I would like to tell you that we were not taught graphic, how to create graphic novels in college at all. And I don't think any colleges do that. Even at School of Visual Arts where I studied illustration, we weren't taught how to create graphic novels. So, uh, you know, you're taught illustration, uh, but there are very few courses in graphic novels in the world. So, uh, there isn't, most graphic novelists are self-taught, and as am I. And, uh, you know, yes, college, col college, what college helped me with was learning how to think deeply, how to question, and how to, you know, it, it, uh, it helped me with my liberal arts thinking especially because Trishti is very powerful with its liberal arts so uh, it really helps you be able to think of various uh, sources around you, um, critique others work, um, see what's been, been done in the world so yes Trishti gave me that but as a graphic novelist I've pretty much learned everything on my own uh, by, by playing with the rules. I have Actually, as a matter of fact, read too many graphic novels. Uh, she was quite shocked I haven't even read one more. So, uh, I, uh, <laughs> no, okay, I thought you were. <laughs> right, but I haven't read many graphic novels, as a matter of fact. I just, uh, you know, I, um, I think there's a way to uh, focus on your own work and uh, to, to explore, to experiment, to find your way by doing. I have one more question because as an artist you'll be able to give us an insight into this. So when you're creating uh, your uh, book or a complete narrative, do you, how does the script writing uh, go together with the art making? You know, so do you sit with the person writing the script or do you write your script yourself and how does it go together? Do you first write the entire script and then go to the art? Right. In the last presentation I did at Hyderabad University, I had discussed that in great detail. So I didn't cover that this time. I like I wanted to cover the process of how I create, but I didn't cover that because I've already done that the last time. But the process involves working on the script first, in my case, and then creating the visuals. So the script is definitely first. You have to do a storyboarding of the script. You have to have a clear. So the first step is reflection and understanding what you want to talk about and having a, a source of information around it. 
uh, and and knowing uh, having enough to say about something uh, and enough depth of of something to say you know uh, not just having something to say but at a certain depth and then the second step is to start writing down how the narrative would fall so uh, this this uh, uh, breaking down the narrative into different parts of how the script will fall is next and then simultaneously i work on fleshing out the text and fleshing out the visual based on the script so that's how it my process is and then there's the inking the um, the the coloring the scanning the design all of that follows um, there are ways you can make that process like you can actually uh, create visuals sometimes and then go along with it to create the book to create the script people can do that but i think that's a little confusing that can be a bit confusing for the creator and um, yeah i mean there are other ways in which you can um, uh, and yeah um, so yeah i mean this is how this is my process i would i'd start with the uh, I start with the script first, and then I move to uh, the text. Yes, I was going to say that in books like the Tabu, this, this side, that side, for example, I uh, was already given a script with text. So in that, in cases like that, you have to separate uh, the parts which are quoted, which would come in speech bubbles from the uh, narrative of the script otherwise, and and then uh, have those in speech bubbles and. Break down the script into uh, pages, uh, storyboards, uh, panels. होता है generally, लेकिन in my case pages. So uh, like uh, page one में क्या आएगा, page two में क्या आएगा, how much of the script will be covered on each page. And uh, you like Vishwajyoti had told me already that you have only twelve pages. So I had to keep in mind that my entire script has to be broken into twelve pages. So you know there was a little bit of going backwards. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. Do we have any more questions? Hi. 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 Uh, I just wanted to know, like, uh, have you uh, experimented with other forms, uh, like more three D forms, like the immersive storytelling? Like, uh, so there's this app, like Mental Canvas, which kind of Uh, transforms the graph 2D graphic novel into a 3D cinematic format so have you experimented in those forms uh, how would you kind of you know convert 2D formats into those okay so i can convert my work into 3D formats i haven't yet uh, i worked with two formats one is a pop up book i have done that that's a 3D format on its own and then i have worked on animation Uh, so, in fact, well, my work is very easy to animate because it's already moving from left to right, and it's already it already has a, has a sense of like it's difficult to animate panels. But in my case, there's already a flow of movement around across the page, so it's very easy for me to animate my work. Uh, and um, so, animation is something that that comes very automatically for my work. And uh, 3D forms. Other than that, like I'm not sure which you're referring to, but uh, pop-up books, for example, yes, I have tried them. And uh, there are other, uh, there are other sources, there are other ways of, like people actually create, people actually create clay models, for example, uh, and put them along with their graphic novels. So that's also an, a way you can extend to the 3D form. Uh, these are the ones that I can think of off my head. Yeah. Uh, where do your influences come from? Do you identify with some artist, or uh, what do you what do you think uh, your influences are? Uh, so I haven't actually, you know, in my case, I haven't actually read uh, or seen too much. Um, I'm not saying. I'm not trying to be vain and say it's not good to, you know, like I'm not saying you, sh you know, I'm not saying there aren't things which are worth seeing, is what I mean. But uh, but at the same time, I uh, decided 
just decided to um, explore on my own and see what meaning I can make of a graphic novel. I haven't read many. I haven't seen much. I I don't watch. I don't watch any movies. So um, I don't really have. I don't really influence. Let myself be influenced by others' work. Uh, which is also why my work is very different. But but then uh, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing because it, it helps you know others' work and then do your own work. So in that sense, I have a weakness. I haven't seen as much as I should have. So but uh, I won't. Uh, my influences are there are no influences as such because I'm completely creating from within. I'm not creating by looking at others' works. I, and I would like to add one thing. I am in constant awe of all kinds of work. I, see. I am. I, I think every piece of work is so much hard work, so much beauty, so much. Um, there's so much to it. So I'm in total awe of every piece of creation I see, every graphic novel I see. It's just that I don't let myself be influenced by. It. That's the difference. Any more questions? Suriti, so, thank you so much for yeah, giving us a glimpse. It was my pleasure. Into the craft of an artist more than the art. Absolutely. Thank you for that.